John here and welcome to the 500 subscribers celebration Q&A and I just want to say thank you to everybody out there uh, for submitting questions and I got some good ones here so we're going to go ahead and jump right into it here with Junebug Films. Uh, Ty, great guy up here. Uh, two questions. Now the first question is the best date night movie snack with a knockout 10 out of 10 girl and she's over at your place. I mean well obviously if the girl is a 10 out of 10 knockout you know she's going to be the snack <laughs> you know who needs nmms who needs raisinets twizzlers you can throw that out the window you have a girl you have a knockout 10 out of 10 girl you know obviously she's going to be the best snack of the night <laughs> you know you're not going to be watching the movie you're going to be watching her uh, but yeah so yeah that's my answer uh number two the perfect movie to show that you can have fun time after the movie. I mean, you know, what kind of fun are we talking about, Ty? I mean, are we talking about fun with the girl or, I mean, I mean, there's a lot of fun movies, you know, that I don't know. I have to think about that. I don't know if question number two correlates with question number one, uh, because there's a lot of fun movies out there or you know, near perfect movies that I can list off, but I don't know. But thank you, Ty, for the questions. Uh, we have uh, Bobby, Bobby Reynolds. Uh, nice place. Thank you, man. Question number one What is your favorite Western movies? I would say uh, Young Guns is one of my favorites, uh, Quigley Down Under. I just rewatched that film again recently. Great movie, entertaining. Um, I don't know why I'm blanking out right now. <laughs> like, this is not a hard one. But, I mean, I love Young Guns. Quigley Down Under is great. Tombstone. I don't know how I forgot that. Um, I would say Tombstone's my favorite. That is my number one favorite. And then up there with Tombstone, Young Guns, uh, Unforgiven, I really like. Uh, I do like Open Range. Uh, to be honest with you, I still have to check out a lot of Clint Eastwood Westerns. You know, Fistful of Dollars is a great, you know, Western. Um, the Quick and the Dead is fun. The Wild Bunch is classic. Uh, but yeah, so I would say like, you know, as far as like a top three, four, definitely Tombstone, Young Guns, Unforgiven, uh, you know, and there's so many more out there that I still have to watch. Uh, let's see. Question number two, if you were to do, do a Happy Days and Saved by the Bell crossover, how would you do it? Well, to be honest with you, I never really got into Happy Days or Saved by the Bell. Saved by the Bell like came out around the time I was born. So I missed that by, you know, I would say it's before my time a little bit. But it was at the time, you know, around that time I was born. So I didn't really see the show or check out the show. But I don't know. That would be such a clash of like, you know, different times, which... I, mean, I know Happy Days, you know, went on into the 80s. But I have no idea how would you do a crossover between Happy Days and Saved by the Bell. It would be weird. Uh, but thank you for the questions. Uh, Sam, the movie reviewer next door. Another great guy up here. Uh, question number one. Any actors that you could think would be good? Wait, let me rewind for a minute. Any actors that you think could be in a good film but haven't done so yet? Um, any actors that I think would be in a good film but haven't done so yet? I have no idea. I have to think about that one. I mean... Like, I don't know. I have to think about that one. Sorry, I don't have a better answer, but I mean, there's actors I'm sure I can, if I, 
think a little bit about this question. Uh, you know, I would say maybe one that hasn't like one. I, okay, Vin Diesel's a guy that you know before it seems like you know he's stuck with the you know Fast and Furious movies, but he hasn't done a good film in a while. <laughs> you know, Dwayne Johnson hasn't done a good film in a while. Probably. Honestly, you know, in the past two decades here, you know, like there's actors that I like that now that you know, I don't really care much for or that I've cared less for that haven't done anything good in a while. And, you know, I named, you know, Vin Diesel and Dwayne Johnson, you know, those two guys, you're just like, why are they wasting their time doing these movies? You know, why is... You know, Dwayne in the Jungle, it seems like in every film now, you know, why is it that Vin Diesel, you know, is stuck making these movies, you know, Fast and Furious 10 or whatever. Like, there's people out there that I think could, do, you know, could definitely do better. But, yeah, I mean, like I said, I know there's more, if I think about the question more, then I can probably name off more people. Um. But question number two, favorite action movie director that not many, not many people talk about. Huh. Maybe. Hmm. Favorite action movie director that not many people talk about. I would say. Now you got me looking over here in my collection. Like, I have a couple of directors in mind, but I kind of, now I'm kind of looking in that direction. Maybe, uh, hmm. Maybe Rennie Harlan you could throw into that. Um, like, that could be one. Like, he did so many good movies back in the day, but not many people talk about him now. I think maybe he's still directing, but I'm not sure. Uh, Andrew Davis. You know, not many people talk about Andrew Davis now, but, you know, you look at his filmography. You know, the films that he's directed over the last 40 years or whatnot. Um, you know, he's a favorite of mine. Which I think he's pretty much retired at this point. Uh, let me see. I don't know. I mean, a lot of those guys, like favorite action movie directors, a lot of them, are, a lot of them are not directing now. You know, either, you know, they've done like they feel they've done enough, and you know they're retired or. You know, today, there's not many great action directors. You know, for a little bit there, I would say what Chad Stahelski was doing with the John Wick movies, but, you know, the way John Wick 4 turned out, you know, I just don't have, uh, I don't really care for what he's going to do next. <laughs> and I know he's working on a Highlander reboot. But, yes, yeah, so, I mean... I would say a lot of the action directors that are, you know, that are favorite directors of mine, you know, nowadays they're not really doing too much. And, you know, hence, you know, people don't really talk about them. But thank you for the questions. Okay, Alter Ego has two. Um, thank you, Alter Ego. And thank you, Sam, for uh, the questions. Uh, but... The first question from Alter Ego, which decade was the better decade for movies? The 80s or the 90s? That's tough. Um, I grew up in the 90s, but I would say the 80s. I think the 80s was, you know, the golden era, for me, at least, with films. I mean, you know, such a great decade and, you know, all types of, you know, genres that you can you know, pick from, and yeah, I just love that time period, and I think the 80s, uh, 
you know, and that's a tough one. I mean, I could I could say easily the '90s, and you know, both give great examples, and both are great times uh, for movies. Um, but I have to pick with the you know the '80s. Question number two: What's your favorite movies? Favorite movie with robots? Definitely not Robo Vampire. Um, favorite movies with robots? Um, why? Well, I don't know why this is hard. I mean, like it should jump to mind like that. Um, but when in doubt, Google. I mean, RoboCop. I would say that's my favorite. Like, I don't know why, like, sometimes my mind just blanks out. Like, I can't think of an answer, and it's right there in front of me. But definitely RoboCop is, you know, my favorite. You know, Short Circuit 2, that's a great one. Westworld. Not many people talk about Westworld now, but, you know, that's a very solid uh, sci-fi movie. Um, you know, I like iRobot. Uh, short circuit, not you know, short circuit. Yeah, you could throw into that category. I mentioned, you know, short circuit two batteries not included. That's a good one. Um, yeah, fly to navigate. Well, flight of the navigator. I mean, there's. I think there's like little like robots in it, but I would say transformers. No, not really. Um, definitely not Bicentennial Man uh, but yeah I would say like up there I would definitely throw into that uh, category like Robocop, Short Circuit 2 those are some of my favorites uh, but thank you for the questions uh, Flash Flex two questions here question one Jersey Mike's or Subway well, I do like Jersey Mike's, but I go to Subway more because it's closer. So for now, I'm just going to pick Subway, and I know that's very unpopular. I know that's going to be controversial, but you know, Jersey Mike's. Uh, it, it seems like I have to be more in the mood for that, and they're totally. I understand their subs are totally different. Um, you know, I know it's considered better than Subway. Uh, but Subway's closer, so I have to default to Subway. <laughs> uh, question number two. Who framed Roger Rabbit or Space Jam? I have to go with uh, who framed Roger Rabbit. I think that's the better movie. Um, but thank you for the questions. Next up, we have DJ Donnelly. If you were to make your own theme park, what type of rides would you have? What would you call it? And how much would you charge for entry, etc.? I have, I have no idea, but maybe maybe we can make like a Chad Cancelton theme park, and he would charge out the ass. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just joking about that. Um, I don't know what I would call the theme park. I don't know. I mean. Obviously, you would have roller coasters, which I do like roller coasters. Uh, I have no idea. Like, I have to really think about that and come up with a, an idea. <laughs> um, but the second question here, you know, you randomly find a board game in the forest or an abandoned building slash house by yourself that you cannot pronounce the name of. Do you take it home and play it? Or would you be too scared in the case, like it's Jumanji? Obviously, I would leave it in the jungle or the forest. That I've seen Jumanji, I know where this is going to go. <laughs> so no, I would not play it. Uh, I would leave it in the ground. But that's just me. I don't. I don't want to roll a five or an eight. Uh, but thank you, DJ. Next up is Grand Theft Ruben. Uh, welcome back. Thank you. Question number one, what's your favorite restaurant? Um, 
Uh, my favorite restaurant. I don't know if I have a favorite. I like... Uh, I don't go there enough, but I like Chili's. Uh, I know, I know some people. But Chili's, you know, it depends with some people. But I do like Chili's. Um, restaurant. Uh, hmm. I do like Cracker Barrel. I can't lie. It's between Chili's and Cracker Barrel. Uh, number two, ever watched the 1993 cartoon The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog? Uh, Jaleel White as Sonic. Never, see, never seen that. I've heard of it. I know he was the voice of Sonic in that, um, but I've never seen it. Thank you for the questions. Um, you know, Amir O'Reilly, Airly. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, welcome back. Thank you. Uh, two questions here. Question number one, thoughts on the cliffhanger sequel? <laughs> yeah, we don't need it. It's not needed. Um, yeah, uh, it's way too late. And it seems like, you know, reading the outline of the plot, you know, it's just a repeat of the first movie. Stallone is way too old. You know, what do you think? You know, a 77-year-old, you know, Stallone's going to do in a cliffhanger sequel. I think he's going to be in the backdrop. I don't think he's going to have a pivotal, you know, a pivotal uh, part. You know, I just think he's just going to, you know, he's just going to be there because, you know, he was in the original. But either he's going to die or he's going to have very little to do. And I just think that it's unneeded. You know, I think like, you know, back in the day, it should have happened, you know, maybe three years after the first movie and the whole idea about the dam that they were going to do for a sequel. But yeah, it's way too late. Uh, question number two, you know, the scariest movie of all time, in your opinion and reasons. Um, I mean, I remember for the first time watching Jaws and that was scary. Um, yeah, the serpent, well, I don't know about all time, but the serpent in the rainbow is kind of freaky. Something about voodoo themes, motifs and movies is always like freakish, you know, like, I don't know what it is about that motif. Um, but they're kind of, it's kind of weird, <laughs> but I mean, I could say Jaws, I mean, you know, probably for its impact and, you know, it's, you know, for when that came out, you know, a lot of people were scared to go back into the water and so forth. I mean, we all know about that. I would say Jaws. I mean, I know it's not technically the scariest, but, you know, I think we, even to this day, you know, we all have that fear, you know, of going out into the ocean and not being, you know, not being able to see below or under our feet. And yeah, anything could happen. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I would say that. But thank you for the questions. Uh, Sean Little, uh, congratulations. Uh, you look good in blue. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm wearing the same shirt. Uh, question number one, have you ever been to a drive-in movie before? Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, that's still, that is, that is still on my bucket list. So hopefully someday here. Question two, did you see, and if so, what did you think and thought, what are your thoughts on Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3? Yeah, I did enjoy it. I did see it when it uh, came out. And what do you know? It had a happy ending. It ended on a good note. All the characters, everything goes full circle. You know, like I thought it was going to end one way. Like, okay, you know, these characters or at least, you know, two of the characters are going to die. And it didn't go that way. And I'm glad. I'm glad it didn't go the way of killing off Rocket or, you know, maybe I'm giving away stuff here. But, you know, I'm just glad that and it's refreshing in a way 
that nobody dies and ended on a happy note all the characters you know again you know nobody dies unlike john wick 4 so again it's very refreshing today you know in the age where you know a lot of our characters are being killed off or you know die in shitty ways that guardians 3 you know every everything ends on a happy note so yeah i mean i don't think they should make any more and that's it so i did enjoy it thank you for the questions um you know next up is common rider 64. uh question number one first movies based on cartoons were big since the 90s then comic book movies have been going on non-stop you know since this comeback in the early 2000s and going strong to this day now video game movies are making it huge in the media do you think video games are going to be the next huge thing and we'll see many more of them in the future i mean i think based off the super mario brothers movie you know now it's crossed into that one billion mark i think we're going to see more either it's going to be sequels to that or they're going you know they're going to look at doing other characters uh I don't know. I mean, how are they going to do like, you know, this whole universe where, you know, it's all leading up to a super, a super smash movie. I don't know. I mean, you know, I haven't seen super Mario brothers movie yet. Um, so I can't say anything about that movie. Like I don't have an opinion on it. So, but you know, I think based off, how much money the Super Mario Brothers movie, um, the new one, has made? Yeah, I could definitely see that they're going to make more. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know what's going to happen next. Like, are are they going to do a sequel to that, or are they are they going to you know explore other characters? Uh, but the second question here, with the wokeness of with the wokeness of gender bending characters making characters gay and lesbian or bisexual race swapping characters heck even adding a trans character you know with all those things being being incorporated into movies shows and other types of media do you think it's all genuine or is it only there for a political statement and to push an agenda i think it's that i think you know, nothing about it is genuine. It's just trying to shoe, like shoehorn as much as that as possible, you know, into our movies. And this has been going on for the past, what, five, six years. And especially in the last two years here, it's, it's just been ramping up more and more. And again, nothing is genuine about it. And time after time, we've seen how these movies fail and nobody is buying and buying into it and but they keep going back to it you know i don't know what it is like how can you fail so many times and yet you keep going back you know to that uh you know to the point of you know we're gonna push this we're gonna push it more and more and you know i know i don't have the greatest answer for this i mean it's just one of those things like, yeah, I'm tired of it. And, you know, I, I know I'm not the only one and yeah, it's just, I think it's going to be, what is it, what is it going to take? Like, you know, honestly, what is it going to take? Is it going to take Hollywood to shut down? I don't know. I mean, movies now you know it's nothing it's not genuine anymore everything is forced so yeah i the last part of that question uh yeah nothing is genuine and it's just a push a statement that's all it is <laughs> again i don't have i know i don't have like the greatest you know answer there because i mean i'm not alone like on this topic i mean i got I mean, we can. I I can probably sit here and rant about the woke stuff for, 
you know, a good hour. But there's so many people on here, people that are good f friends of mine that can do it so much better. Um, and I'm tired of it too. I, you know, I just, I know I don't really, I don't really go off into those tangents, you know, when it comes to videos and stuff. But believe me, you know, I, I'm just as tired of it as everybody else is. And yeah, so, <laughs> but thank you for the questions. Uh, Studio Red Band, uh, what is your dream project? Can we just get a movie? Like, if we made a, if they, if somehow we can make a movie starring all of us, that would be awesome. Like, I don't know who would direct it, but if we can have, like, you know, we're the expendables of YouTube, so we can make our own action movie, have it star, you know, us and Rambo Raff and Wild Man Beyond and Mike OCP, Michael King, uh, you know, Bobby, Steven, Junebug, everybody out there watching, Sean Little. Yeah, you know, we can make our own action movie and uh, have it crowdfunded. <laughs> That's my dream project. But thank you for the question. Okay, so the last two questions here are from Wildman Beyond. Uh, question one. You know, what are your thoughts on AI? AI probably taking over Hollywood. I think... Uh, I think it's a... AI, I mean... I just think, honestly, it's a lazy way out. And I know that's such a, s a simple response. Like, you know, I know I'm not going to have the best answer for this. AI is just, I think it's just a lazy as far as like uh, creativity is concerned. Because all you have to do is just rely on AI to, you know, make stories. And I'm sure, you know, there's things out there that are capable of writing its, uh, like writing out stories or plots or ideas. But nothing beats this. Nothing's going to take this, uh, the creativity that is within us. And I think it's scary. I mean, that, you know we're now getting to the point where we're relying on AI to basically fill in the blanks and we're taking out the human factor and we're taking out the human element to where we can't think for ourselves. You know, we don't want to take the time and, you know, write out a script or write out an idea, write out a plot, create art. You know, that's within us. You know, now we're, we're going to rely you know, I think they're trying to they're trying to come up with ways to uh, minimize AI or you know regulate it, whatever it takes, uh, because it's one of those things that it's slowly creeping in, and people are using AI in different ways. I mean, man, it's concerning. I don't see how you know people are you know some people are just accepting of AI and that AI should take over and uh, and all it takes is for AI to, you know, you know, slip in a little bit and it doesn't take much. So the, I think for me, my response to that is that, you know, it's concerning and I think we need to take care of it before we really have a problem. I mean, how many movies have we seen that we've been there? You know, uh, the track record when it comes to AI. And we've seen this, you know, we've seen, you know, AI in all types of movies. You know, it doesn't usually end well, does it? It doesn't usually end, you know, happy or it doesn't make life better, you know, or more pleasant. You know, it's usually, you know, usually with AI and movies. You know, it's not a good thing. And yeah, let's not get carried away here or, you know, you know, AI, you know, 
we look at it and we can, you know, play with it and, you know, put information into AI and, hey, create this for me and what have you. But that's all it takes is a little bit. And, you know, we may not now think anything bad is going to happen, but, you know, what is going to happen if AI is starting to, you know, like crawl its way in now, what's going to happen in the next five years? So I think that it's a, yeah, I think some people may look at the positives, but I don't see no positives here. But that's just my opinion. Uh, number two, you know, how do you see a crossover with Cobra Kai and Ninja Turtles? Maybe you could do like an animated short or, I mean, that would be cool. I'd like to see that. <laughs> Can you imagine, you know, like, you know, Johnny Lawrence and Raphael and, or Daniel going up against, uh, you know, Leonardo. I mean, you could have <laughs> Terry Silver versus Splinter. I don't know. I mean, that would be fun, like, if it was done in animation form like an animated movie, an hour and 20 minute movie, I would say that is the only route that you can take with the crossover between those two. Um, but yeah, I would say do it like an animation, animated movie. But those are all of the questions uh, for this Q&A here. And I just want to say thank you to everybody out there for watching. And I know I don't really give the best answers here, you know, I'm sorry if the answers weren't the best, but, you know, I try. Um, but again, thank you to everybody for submitting questions. Junebug, Bobby, uh, Sam, Alter Ego, Flash Flex, DJ Donnelly, Grand Theft Ruben, Omir, uh, Sean Little, Common Rider 64, Studio Red Band, While I'm in Beyond. Again, thank you. And... Hope you enjoyed this video here. Thank you for watching and have a good day.